Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Help for HD TV. My name is London Tabor and today I want to share a series of interviews that I did about public impact. Recently we took a trip to California for Help for HD's hype event and I asked members of our community what's the hardest thing that you have to deal with in public when it comes to Huntington's disease or juvenile Huntington's disease and how did you handle it? And this is what they said. So in public right now, what I feel is the biggest challenge is just acceptance and understanding of Huntington's disease. A lot of families in the Huntington's disease community face different things in public eye. Um, some of the things in our family that we have faced have been judgment and misunderstanding. And I think for us as a family, the hardest things have been um just that people don't know what Huntington's disease is. So there are a lot of assumptions and there are a lot of reasons why people think that behaviors are happening. With both my mom and my brother, we have experienced a lot of looks and stares and judgments. And in the earlier years of me understanding what Huntington's disease was, I reacted in anger and I reacted very defensively. Um, now and currently with my brother, I often take the time to educate and to kind of talk about Huntington's disease um, in a much kinder way, but also in a way to spread awareness about what this disease can do to families and what it can do to an individual. So I think it's um, educating people. And, you know, Carlos and I have been out and we can, we can be at a bar and we're having a, a soda each. And somebody will come up and They'll meet me and then they'll say, oh, wow, your, your partner's having a really good time, right? Remember, remember they do that? Um, they think he's completely um, drunk or, or whatever. And then the story I think I'll talk about is Puerto Vallarta. Do you remember Puerto Vallarta, Mexico? Yeah, yeah. Puerto Vallarta. Right, so do you remember what happened there with the police? Oh, yeah. He told me there, yeah. Yeah, he told me. Yeah, he told me. Ask him if I speak the spider here. So we were on our way home from a club at two in the morning and we'd had, Carlos loves to dance. So he'd been dancing for three hours and we literally had two beers each, two Coronas. That was it. Um, at least two hours before. But because he's danced in his Korea, we're, we're walking home. And the next thing you know, we see uh, a white pickup truck with four cops with machine guns or whatever those guns are. They pull up directly right at him. And I explained that... Um, Carlos says hunting disease. And I said, do you, do you understand hunting disease? And they're all around him and they're patting us down. And they, they, they've got our shorts down and we're on the side of the street. And we're pretty scared. And I kept saying, we have, uh, he has hunting disease. Do you understand what that is? And the, the, I don't speak Spanish. And uh, the cop said, uh, si. And he asked Carlos one question. And what was that? Yeah. If, I speak Spanish, I if he yeah. speaks Spanish, I yeah. and, yeah. Um, and he said yes or see yeah. something I rec yeah. recognize. And what was so important about it is, I'm going to show you what's in my pocket. One, I have on my wristband, yeah. Huntington's yeah. disease. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's cure Huntington's disease. And the other thing is, I was carrying Carlos's wallet, his phone, his everything, yeah. Yeah. Um, for a reason. Because I don't want him losing these. And I showed this to the cop. I said, please, I'm not making this up. Yeah. And... The cop must have stared at the back of this for five minutes. And if you're familiar, it says on there, I have Huntington's disease. Has his name, please bring me to the hospital or the police department, our Stu Hopper. That's me. And um, the cop kept going through our, you know, our, our pockets and our wallets and stuff. Just kept staring at this. And then finally, we were on our way. And I think we need to educate the police about this. And that's our, uh, that was our night. Um, my biggest challenge while out in public with my daughter Chloe um, is that they don't think she's sick. In general, like usually you can tell if something's wrong with a child with a disability. Um, unfortunately, with Huntington's, they do seem fine when they're kids, um, and it's hard to tell that they do have a disability and that the disability is there. Um, so, for instance, we were out in Disney and we were kind of just getting all these looks as to why are they getting to cut in line or why are they going the first in, or in front of line? Um, but, you know, they don't realize she is struggling with, 
you know, her ability to walk and that she she needs to be in this wheelchair. Um, so I think that's the biggest struggle I face as we are out in public is that they don't they don't realize she does have a disability. And it's just always the looks. And um, they don't, I guess they feel like she doesn't have a disability or that by the way it looks, she doesn't have a disability. Um, the way I try to handle it is just try to be positive and patient, you know, just making sure Chloe's okay and she's taken care of. Um, and cause Mama Bear does want to come out, but um, we try our best. And I think that's really the biggest difficulty we have is while we're out in public is all the stairs and the wheelchair. Well, I guess the biggest struggle so far, we haven't had a ton. Um, the biggest struggle so far is just people not really knowing what's going on or understanding because Bella looks like a happy, healthy 15 year old. And so when they see her like moving slow or like having trouble doing things, they kind of get this like inquisitive look. Um, I don't feel like we're getting super judged just yet, but they're definitely trying to figure it out. So it's just hard navigating when to say something, when not to say something. And, um, being in groups in public in like bigger crowds moving through crowds is hard for her and so if she's moving really slow I can see people getting like kind of irritated that she's not moving with the speed of the rest of the crowd so I find myself trying to make changes into what we're doing to accommodate other people so to speak but also just to make it so she doesn't feel rushed or feel stressed out that maybe she's not keeping up with the crowd and that people might be getting irritated or frustrated with her and us as a whole. So, I mean, I think that's where we're at so far. Um, luckily we haven't had anybody say anything to us in public. Um, I've had people come to me on the side, not knowing what's going on. And so just educating people ends up being what we end up doing. And then obviously they're way more sympathetic to what's going on. So, yeah, I mean, I guess that's our biggest public issue. I think the biggest struggle that Olivia and I face um, when we're out is when people are looking at her, sometimes adults, sometimes children, and people don't know what she has or how to react to her. Um, because with Olivia, she has dystonia really bad where her head is tilted so much to the left side that it's definitely different than uh, most other children. And so no one knows exactly what is wrong with Olivia. And she walks sideways a lot. Um, her speech is off. So if people talk to her or ask her a question, it's definitely hard for them to understand. So I sometimes have to repeat or answer for her when they don't understand what she has said. So I think that the biggest part that is difficult is the fact that there is no awareness for JHD children, um, for people to understand what the disease is and for, and try as a parent to try to help our child with what they have. And for people who are sitting there staring at them, looking at them, um, unsure of what to do, um, and just try to get the people who are staring at our children, not, you know, our child not to see that. Okay. So, um, public interaction with, um, HD is like, it, it can be hit or miss. You can run into somebody who has, um, no idea what Huntington's is and they may you like tell them what it is and then they have a, they have a positive response or they have like a, just a neutral response to it. I run into these situations all the time. And in my earlier stages of, the, of um, my journey with Huntington's, when I was just a young spry chicken, I was um, just always telling people, as many people as I could about um, Huntington's. But as time goes on and like my journey with like getting closer to being on set, you know, Sometimes I'm not in the mood to talk about high intense or sometimes I'm not in the mood to tell, to answer, you know, like 51 questions about Huntington's and, you know, my mom's story and what my future holds. And um, 
And sometimes I regret I regret not having a conversation with somebody or I feel like maybe I overshared with somebody because, you know, like somebody asked how you doing. Like people ask, how you doing? But well, they really don't mean how you doing. They're just asking you how you doing just a second. And so um, you can learn real quick that like it's just sometimes it's just safer to just just like keep it in sometimes. But I'm not that person. I'm a very, you know, like my feelings are on my shoulder and I like to express how I feel. And sometimes that comes with good feedback and sometimes it comes with negative feedback. I um um I was in an Uber ride today, for example, and um I'm leaving the airport and the guy was said and I was tired and you know, I hadn't eaten since I left my house at 4 a.m. And the guy said, oh, what are you doing in California, in Sacramento? I was like, oh, I, um, I'm just here for a conference. Just trying to keep it short and sweet because I was in the Uber and I didn't feel like right on talking to my Uber driver. And um, which, by the way, I think there should be like a little little thing on the Uber app that says not in the mood for talking. So the Uber driver, <laughs> isn't that horrible? <laughs> But no, so I was in the Uber ride and I was just like tired. I was like, get me to my hotel. And um, he was like, oh, what are you doing in Sacramento? I was like, oh, the conference. You know, and like a one word answer thinking that he would get the hit. And he was like, oh, what you what, what conference for? And I was like, I don't want to go down this whole, whole thing. I was like, oh, a medical conference. And then that, that, that sufficed for him. And like, I... Didn't think twice about it because I wasn't in the mood for answering all the questions that comes with, oh, well, what is Huntington? Oh, well, why do you do this? Oh, well, then it is. And by the way, I love that. Like, I am a person who, like, loves to talk about Huntington and tell people to spread awareness. And, um, but I was just having a little mood. And, and sure enough, my lesson came to me because... A couple hours later, we're in an Uber again and with some friends who have Huntington's. And the lady says, oh, what are y'all doing here? And we start talking about Huntington's and end up having the most amazing 10, 15 minute conversation with her. And we were, she was able to relate with us. She had like super great like responses to everything. She was like, just like, it was just a really, really good conversation the entire time. And we like, like loved her when we got out of it. And so it just reminded me that like, Sharing and giving awareness about different um, about Heinzens it should always be our number one goal, and um, we should be grateful that somebody is asking or we getting the opportunity to tell somebody about Heinzens because it impacts us on so many levels. I just find myself some days like, oh, I'm in the mood for Heinzens to talk about it. Some days I'm not, but uh, we just never know what the public is going to perceive. Hello, um, my name is Chris Brown. I have Huntington's disease. I am a, um, <laughs> I have many labels. I am pre-symptomatic. I am um, a patient advocate. I am a, um, I've been a clinical trial. I, um, I turned 38 in a couple months, which is the same age my mom had Huntington's when she started. And I um, care a lot about the AC community, and I hope one day that we have a cure for treatment for this disease. And I, um, yeah, thank you.